Welcome to today's video. As you guys know, I've been doing a fair few videos recently at Japanese car yards to show you guys what the pricing is doing here with the pandemic and how there seems to be another bubble on top of a bubble right now that seems to have happened because of everything with COVID and, and just how no one really kind of wants to spend money right now. So we've seen a lot of people sitting on cars, raising the prices and stuff, waiting for this to all kind of like, you know, balance out before I guess people are gonna start being a bit more competitive with pricing. So today we are at Garage R here in Atsugi. And they, this particular Garage R um, is renowned for selling a lot of Skylines and Sylvias. And uh, I don't know if you saw when I was walking up here, a lot of S15s here right now. And uh, there's a fair few 34s around as well. So a really good car yard to go to, to see what pricing is doing here. They also sell a fair few Zs, which is actually really good because at some point, I wouldn't mind getting a Z over here. Now, that aside, we can really get a good idea on what pricing is like here. Um, all these S chassis along here, um, they've got some 34s up there, up and there, a couple GTRs and stuff. Just a bunch of, I guess, all the sought after cars. Um, unfortunately, no Toyotas really. It's mainly Nissans here today. So we're gonna jump into that. Um, loving these uh, Laurels here, the newer version Laurels. These things from a distance always sometimes trick me. Um, and previously, until I kind of like learned to look out for the little key differences, um, I used to think that these looked a lot like chasers from the distance, like just the front. The rear, not at all, but fronts would always kind of get me. Anyways, I think what we're gonna do is start all the way from up the back here and work our way through and check out every car that's here and what the, the selling price is. There are some cars here that don't have pricing on them because they've just gotten some inventory like from the auctions and stuff. So what that means is, you know, like this needs to be repaired and stuff and then they'll, they'll end up selling it. So let's go through and start from the back and see what we find. Taking a quick moment to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Lucky Labo. And if you don't know who they are, they are a specialty retail solution for authentic JDM goods with laser focus on the Sylvia and Skyline platforms. Uh, they sell a bunch of vintage, authentic, and quirky items that highlight and show reverence for history and inspire owners to be unique. One of those items I have over here that I want to show you on the S15, so let's check it out. These are called the Swing Hand Pop, and if you know anything about Japanese car culture, you know that these are only sold in Japan. But the best thing is, is Lucky Labo are the only authorized international dealers for these, so they have tons of these in stock at all times, and I'm gonna quickly set one up and show you how sick they are. Also, they smell like melon soda, which is just absolutely awesome. Just got this thing set up out of the pack, and look at this guy already wanting to wave. And then, you can just sticker on your window just like that. Now the best thing is, is you've got two mounting orientations on these so you can go sideways, you can go on the top depending on how your car is. But the best thing is, is it just moves on the inertia of your car. Now generally you're supposed to install these on the inside of your car but a lot of people over here also put them on the outside of the car because you know you never know when uh, you're hitting the shotoko and you want to have something here so that when the police are chasing you you can be like Bye bye Paris. But of course I don't want this thing to weather bad outside so I've put it back inside the car and I think it's perfect to be there on the passenger window because as I'm flying past on and I chop them, they know what's up. Bye bye. I love this product a lot because it's super simple and it's something that's been in Japanese car culture for the longest time. So head to luckylabo.com, get yourself one of these and check out some of the other projects and don't forget to support the companies that support me and thank you so much Lucky Labo for sponsoring this video. I would not be able to do the things that I'm doing today without their support. I'm not sure if anyone's gonna be interested in these particular cars. I don't actually know what this Mitsubishi is or the Suzuki, obviously it's a K car. Uh, but this particular one's selling for just under $10,000 USD. Um, I'm gonna be trying to keep all of the pricing at USD because it's much easier for me to do the, uh, like a rough conversion rate based off uh, the Japanese yen. And see how this says 37.0. Um, the easiest way to understand that is add a few more zeros. These uh, symbols here, it, it's actually more like uh, 370,000 yen. So the easiest conversion rate is to take two zeros off that and it's roughly 37,000. Now USD is worth a lot more, uh, a little bit more, sorry, than Japanese yen. So you could probably assume that this is gonna be around $3,500. And for a K car, that's pretty average. For this thing, I'm not sure. So 98.0, that's 
that's going to be roughly about 9.8 grand. Um, so now that we understand pricing, another thing with Japanese, um, uh, like I guess for sale boards, is you want to look at what year the car was made. And normally uh, they put a bunch of stuff at the bottom here. So you can see on the far left hand side, H19. That represents the Japanese calendar year based off the emperor, which is Hese and 23 on this one. Now, if you want to look up what year that specifically is, just type in Google Japanese calendar and type in H23 and it'll translate it into, you know, 1990 or whatever. I don't I don't know Heisei off the top of my head unfortunately. Not many Japanese people actually do. But anyways, um we've got a V35 Skyline. These were Skylines here in Japan, not Infinities. This thing's selling cheap. It's like $3,500 USD and Hesse 15 um, and it's got a, a, apparently 38,000 kilometers on the clock. It's actually pretty low. Not too bad. Moving on, we got this 180SX Type X Hesse 9, 61,000 kilometers. They want about $22,000 for this. Um, you can see the auction paperwork here and they include the history report which shows it has been in a rear end accident. They're not afraid to show that information and it has still had a 3.5 grade in auction. Um, oh, actually this may not be accident, that's actually just blemishes to the paint I believe. Yeah, otherwise it wouldn't be in a 3.5. Um, wow, that's, that's actually super clean. Not too bad. So yeah, you can see those X markings there. It's referring to the double X is paint blemishes and stuff like that. So not too bad. No like real accident damage it seems. So pretty good. Um, but yeah, $22,000 for this 180SX. Man have S13s gone up in price. Go back a few years and you could probably buy this for like five grand. That's crazy to think of that this 180SX is $22,000. Wow. It is clean though, I will give them that. It's very nice. All the original Type X interior. Not bad at all. And then uh, we're gonna move on, I guess, to the line of S15s. Shame there isn't any more S S13s though. This S15 is selling for $21,000 uh, 21, roughly. It's got 105,000 kilometers from Hesse 14. Um, it's, it's kind of funny when you think about it that this only has roughly 40,000 kilometers more than this and there's about 10 years difference between when these cars were made. I would prefer this over the 180 because this is newer and has, you know, better engine and stuff like that with the VVTI, with VCT, sorry. But this is way more expensive. Isn't that funny? It's, it's crazy how the market's changed so much. Anyways. It's not too bad. Honestly, like where I'm seeing S15's priced at at the moment, that's pretty bang on. About 20 grand is roughly what I would expect to pay for something like this. And because this is at a car yard as well, you guys need to take into account like the pricing at car yards is they're making money off the, their cars, right? So if you're trying to buy some one of these cars overseas like in America, imported in, if you're paying more than this, then you're getting ripped off. So make sure that when you're getting a car that it isn't really any more than this because if dealers are, make, are, are selling cars for this price, they're making at least 20% on the car. Otherwise, it's not worth it for them to sell it. So if you're paying more than this, then something's wrong. But yeah, let's move on to the next one. This one's 23,000. It's only got 55,000 kilometers on the clock. It is an R grade though. So this has been in a, in, in a big accident at some point. Um, or it has rust. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it has to be uh, repairable. So it must have originally been in an accident of some kind. It's hard to tell by this, but it does seem like it was involved in a front-end accident collision. Not too bad, though. It looks good. As long as it's all been properly repaired, I mean, who cares, right? Type R's are really going up in price, though. Genuine Type R. It's got a, a, a brid bucket seat, nice nardy wheel, bunch of good parts in there. 
it's really not bad. Pretty decent looking Type R. Yeah. These are just gonna keep going up in price too, unfortunately. And we got over here, another S15. Those eyelids are kinda cool. Um, under negotiation, so currently no price. Another S15, this one's a R grade as well, which means it's got previous accident damage in the front end, it seems by that report. We are looking at about $19,000 USD, 121,000 uh, kilometers on the clock, Hesse 11, pretty decent carbon fiber hood, aftermarket uh, front bar aero. Looks like uh, OEM, uh, sorry, uh, fiberglass fenders as well. A little bit of interesting interior. It's got a, a, a bride bucket seat as well, brid. Not too bad. It's got the D-Max tails. Aftermarket aero rear bar as well. This one's not too bad. Definitely, uh, probably a decent car for someone who wants to get into modifying and having fun with it because it's kind of had a bit of stuff done and it seems pretty tastefully done and it's a pretty decent price for those kilometers. Moving on, we've got probably my favorite looking S15 here. Midnight purple, completely repainted, wide over fenders front and rear, RG2 Yokohama Advan wheels. It's listed at about $23,000. We're looking at just under 100,000 kilometers on the clock, 99,000 and Hesse 12. This is a perfect example of what is happening to the market right now. Because this is so heavily modified, not the original paint, um, it's obviously been drifted at some point uh, and used in motorsport here. Normally something like it's got a cage, it's got bucket seats, a bunch of aftermarket parts on it. Seems like the over fenders have been molded in and stuff. This is something you would expect to be a lot more cheaper than market price because it's been this heavily modified, right? Wrong. Well, at least now with the current market, it's kind of crazy. There's a lot on this that I guess for someone who wanted to buy an original Type R would not be interested in. It's also an R grade, complete front end accident. Like, Oh man, 23 grand. I really got my S15 at the right time. This one's selling for $21,000. And look, and like if you thought this was heavily modified, look at this thing. Now don't get me wrong, I know this is gonna to appeal to a lot of people, but like, I don't know if you can see this, but the whole headlight's collapsing here. You can see inside the light from the top. The carbon fiber hood is completely deteriorating. The aero on this is probably not the most sought after aero. And don't get me wrong, like it's an S15 nonetheless, but it's been heavily modified. Massive wide body kit on it. It's the massive boxy type. That's like 55 millimeters out. Same on the front there. Look at that, huge. But someone will pay a lot of money for this. It needs a respray, like all the clear coats peeling off. Nice wing though. Aftermarket tails. This has had a lot of, I guess, work put into it, I guess, if you think about all the modifications. And let's have a look. It's got R grade as well. So it's been in a, a complete front end crash. All, all front fenders and hood and, and stuff have uh, been damaged. Interesting. One thing to note, guys, is just because the auction paperwork says it's been in a crash, doesn't mean that anything structurally is wrong or bad. It may even mean that nothing was even bent. It was just fenders were replaced. And I think you're gonna find that a lot of these cars, probably that is the situation, even though the auction paperwork is R gray, which means accident damage and stuff. That can sometimes just mean fenders have been changed or, you know, aftermarket hood is on there that's not OEM. So they don't, they just assume that it's been replaced because of an accident. Uh, which is obviously not the case, but that's one thing to take into account. Or they have genuinely been in accidents and um, you know parts were replaced and stuff. If something's damaged or bent, it actually says it on the paperwork. If they see evidence of something being like a 
let's just say a strut tower being replaced and they can see the repair marks and stuff of it being manually welded in like dodgily and not correctly that will be on the auction paperwork but yeah only obvious stuff though like they can't go over every car with a fine comb looking over here we're looking at these two laurels um, and this is kind of mind-blowing for me never would I suspect that laurels would skyrocket like this in price these cars were so cheap a few years ago it's insane $13,000 for this one, 120,000 kilometers on the clock, SA11. It's a relatively clear, uh, clean, sorry, Laurel. Manual, RB25, really good car. This one, uh, significantly about 40,000 kilometers less, 86,000 kilometers on the clock, SA13. It's a newer model as well than this one. This is about 13,000 USD. This is 25,000 USD, and this is an R once again. Most likely because of the aftermarket fenders, I presume, because it's got wide and over fenders. This is probably a previous, you know, kind of drift car setup used in motorsport. So it's one thing to keep in mind. Once again, I keep saying just because it's an R grade car, it doesn't mean it's a trash car. It just means there are parts replaced on it, which to the auction house looks like it's been in an accident and parts have been replaced because of that but that's obviously not the case not too bad work CR Kai's I mean it's clean it's got a bride bucket seat harness so I mean this would be a perfect car for a lot of people out there you can see the headlights have been filling up with water though see all the rust in there it's so mind-blowing that this is 25 grand. And this is what I say. I don't think these cars are priced this way to sell. I think this is to stop them from selling and not get so much interest right now because no one's really buying anything. So if they bring the price up, they sit on the stock for a bit, and then when everything settles down again, then you know we're looking at uh, pricing being a lot more competitive and a lot cheaper, I assume. We got a 34 GT here. 64,000 kilometers. Um, I'm assuming this is, oh no, it's a manual, non-turbo. Manual, non-turbo. Uh, Hesse 12, 10 grand. This is probably, this is crazy that this is still 10 grand here. Still though, I'm surprised it's this cheap. For a four-door, non-turbo, R34 Skyline, to be 10 grand, it's kind of actually still a bargain. These used to be about $2,000. Now they're $10,000, probably could sell them in America for fifteen twenty, and that's a non-turbo one, which is mind-blowing to me. Let's get a good look at it. It's relatively clean. Not bad. We'll quickly skim over the Zs, because the Zs are obviously uh, not like a, a JD, like a Japanese kind of only car, but this is an Auto Z. Looking at about eight grand for this one. Uh, this one's about eight grand. It's done unknown kilometers, most likely cluster swapped. It's an auto as well. It's crazy that autos sell for this much. This one's six grand, roughly. Unknown kilometers once again. It's gotta be, oh, this one actually is a manual. Not a soft top either. This could be a perfect, uh, a perfect Z for me. Hang on, Hesse 14. Is that 2008 and above? I want a HR. Um, I think I can look at the engine picture here and figure that out. I don't know. I'd have to look. I can't see it. It's got the engine cover on it. <laughs> I'll look up that later. Hesse 14. Okay. Another 350 here. No pricing on that. This one, uh, nine, nine grand roughly. 100,000 kilometers on the clock. Auto, $8,000. 179,000 kilometers on the clock. Manual. So this will probably be the newer model ones. That's why they're a bit more expensive, even though they got high mileage. $9,000, 87,000 kilometers, manual, 3.5 auction grade. $4,000 roughly, 124,000 Ks, four grade auction, automatic. And then up here, $10,000, unknown kilometers, auto, SA17. So this is the HR model. SA14's got to be a DE or a rev up. All right. Let's take a look at some of these cars up the back here. There's some pretty uh, 
pretty unique ones here. We've got this Stasia. They want 17 grand for this. Unknown kilometers, cluster's been swapped out. Hesse 10, obviously manual. Pretty clean, um, paint could do with a bit of work. These are really going up in pricing as well. Really good car, if you don't know much about it, it's pretty much a station wagon Skyline. Uh, they even made a GTR version of this, all wheel drive from the 33 GTR drivetrain. Really cool family car. Uh, we got a Z here that's under negotiation. We got an EK Civic. Really like that paint job on that actually. That's kind of nice. 16 grand for this. Is this actually Type R? Oh, it's a genuine Type R. It is, yeah. Right here, Type R. Very cool. 16 grand. That's actually not too bad. I've seen these been selling for upwards of 25 grand. I guess the the non-OEM paint job isn't going to help with value for these actually for collectibles. 138,000 kilometers. SA9. Not too bad. Aftermarket lights and a whole bunch of stuff. So, yeah, that's the thing. Type R's, they hold their value if it's all original. If it's all been heavily modified and changed, Type R's devalue a lot. Well, they're a lot cheaper anyways. Um, we've got a GT Coupe Skyline, which is currently not ready for sale. Looks pretty stock and unmolested. Uh, they've got a 35 GTR under negotiation right now, so we won't uh, get a price on that, unfortunately. One of the new model SDIs. They want 33 grand for that. It's only done 70,000 kilometers, so still pretty cheap. Actually, no, that's less than 70. That's 7,000 kilometers, actually. So that thing's actually practically brand new. Got an Infinity. Selling this for 14K. It's done 65,000 kilometers. It's pretty cheap. This is cool. $28,000 will get you the Z, guys. Trying to have a quick look at the thing. So, see, this is not Hesse, this is Showa 51. Um, so, and the last time it was registered was Hesse 33. So one thing is with the whole like Japanese calendar thing, it goes via the era that the emperor was in reign and ruling. So now we are in Dewa, so technically, now the Japanese calendar starts from zero again, well, one again, and it's Reiwa, one, Reiwa, two. But Heisei was the previous emperor, so the H in the number represents how many years they were in power for, well, in reign for, because they don't really have power anymore, emperors in Japan. But So Heisei 33 was the last time it was um, registered. Showa 51, so the Showa emperor 51 was when this was uh, made in the factory. But $28,000 for this super clean Z, S30. I'd probably pay that for this. It's a, pretty much a collectibles car at this point. Really nice. And then moving up here, when I had a quick walk around, pretty much all these cars, none of them have pricing on it. I think they just picked up all of these from the auction and they're going to either use them for parts or repair them and sell them. There's some potential here, like this S15 and, and stuff like that. I actually used to know the previous owner of this S15, so that's kind of funny. Um, there's a 34 GTT here that has a whole bunch of rear quarter damage that's going to get fixed probably and sold. But yeah, not too bad. Apparently this is under negotiation for a sale. And this S15 has been in a front end accident of some kind. I, I'm not going to lie, I like those Advan uh, uh, trice on the front though. I'm a big sucker for these tri spokes. I think they look really cool for the era that they came out in. I think that kind of summarizes everything that's here and what's what everything is selling for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, I really like doing this to help you guys out. Um, I hate seeing people getting taken advantage of when they're trying to uh, export cars out of Japan and stuff like that. So really try to get in touch with someone or a company that is honest and has a lot of great reviews and things like that and isn't afraid to you know, share auction paperwork and results with you. It's one very, very important thing for anyone wanting to get a car out of Japan. One, ask for the registration history report that shows you the kilometers and stuff and if it's ever been changed. Um, every time it's been registered, every two years, the cars over here get an inspection called Shuken and the number on the odometer is written down. So if ever the uh, cluster is changed, you can see that in those reports. 
So there's that paperwork you want, the registration paperwork, and then there's the, um, the auction paperwork if the car was bought from the auction. And being honest, pretty much every car in Japan is gonna go through the auctions at some point, unless it's like a one owner car. In that case, you're probably looking at spending a lot of money for something like that. One owner cars are also where you need to be very, very careful because there is no like exchanging of hands and it hasn't gone through the auction. If it was bought privately, there is no way for you to have any official documentation to prove it is what the seller is saying. So yes, everyone wants a one owner car because the quality and the condition of the car is normally really, really good. But if it hasn't gone through the auctions, it's never been inspected. And if it's only ever been with one owner, then they could have just changed the cluster out and you know, whenever they went and got shuck in, just put the original one back in and then sold it with the lower one. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of things that if it's one owner that you can't triple check on. Now, obviously you can pay someone to do an inspection on the car and stuff like that, which there are people that do that kind of service in Japan, but still, you need to be very, very careful. And I think that if anyone was trying to spend money on a one owner car, um, you probably have a lot of money at your expense to pay for those services. So just be very careful out there, guys. If any dealers are saying, oh, one only car, one owner only car, that's why there's no paperwork, be suspicious. Um, but you should be able to obviously do your own research. There are a lot of websites online for Japanese odometer checks and things like that where it's a third party company unassociated with any sellers here in Japan or dealers. You'll be able to figure out very soon if something doesn't add up. Um, I've been caught in a few situations before and very luckily didn't end up going through with the purchases because of it when I used to live in Australia. So I, I really like to show you guys this kind of content so that it educates you guys to make sure none of you get screwed over. Um, obviously, big thank you to Garage R for letting me film their yard. As always, it's been six months since I was last here and I don't think I've seen one single car here that was the same six months ago. Um, but in saying that, they're definitely sitting on these. Like, there's no way that some of those cars are gonna sell for that pricing. But anyways, guys, once again, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think. What was your favorite car there? What do you think about this bubble on top of a bubble right now with the COVID the whole thing and the pandemic? There's definitely something happening. Do you think the pricing is going to stay where it's at now and just keep going up? Or do you think we're going to kind of level back down and then start climbing again? I think we're probably going to, once the pandemic and the vaccine kind of comes out, I think we're probably going to see things kind of like come down back to what they were before and then start climbing again. Or things are going to escalate even more and keep going up. So it depends. I, I really am curious to see what the market's gonna do. I don't think it can hold out forever. I really think this is a bubble and it is gonna pop because like I said, when the 34 and the JZX 100s and the S15s are all available in the States, there's no other cars for the States to wait for after that. That's really it. No other cool cars were made in Japan that no one else got after that. So once that kind of normalizes and everyone starts playing around with them and stuff, a few years after that, all the cars that are still left here in Japan probably will uh i think the pricing will go down and significantly unless it's like collector edition models special limited edition model stuff but yeah anyways curious to know your thoughts as always hope you enjoyed the video smash the like button write the comment and subscribe and i'll see you all in tomorrow's video peace out Jamata.